Here are 13 very important and crucial do's and don'ts in Stardew Valley. Enjoy! Don't use the geode crusher. Yeah, this little device will allow you to crack open geodes in your home without having to go to Clint's store. However, it costs an entire piece of coal and it takes an entire in-game hour as well. Clint only charges 25 gold per geode so this price is basically negligible. It's just not worth it. Do use the geode crusher. Yeah, there's actually one good use for these so listen close. If you crack open a geode at Clint and something good comes out like Iridium Ore or a Prismatic Shard, then immediately use the same type of geode in the Geode Crusher to guarantee that you get that item again. The Geode Crusher's count is one behind Clint's for some reason, so abuse this for free valuable resources. Don't craft staircases. Yes, staircases are amazing and they will allow you to reach the ultimate depths of the skull cavern, allowing you to skip garbage floors and get deep. That is where the loot is after all. However, each staircase will cost you 99 stone. If you made 100 staircases, that would be close to 10,000 stone. This just cannot be worth it. Actually, it just isn't. Do duplicate jades using crystallariums and then trade those in at the desert trader on Sunday for staircases. This is almost effortless once you have a couple crystallariums. This is the only viable way to get staircases in the game without having to break the bank. You can accumulate thousands of jades really easily using crystallariums. If you don't abuse this method, you are just playing the game wrong. Don't miss birthdays ever. Everyone in the game has a birthday except for you of course. These birthdays are valuable. They will allow you to rapidly make friends. This is important because you will benefit from these friends, gifts, recipes, etc. And most importantly, perfection. Do maximize birthdays by using Iridium quality loved gifts. As you know, there is a bonus for giving someone a gift on their birthday. There is also a bonus for giving an Iridium quality loved gift at any time of the year. Combining these benefits will guarantee that you gain four entire hearts with a single gift. This is a no-brainer. Do it. Do it now so you don't have to do it later. Don't ever run out of grass and allow your animals to suffer from starvation. Additionally, don't ever cut down grass on your farm until you have built a silo. There is no denying it. Animals are a fundamental part of your farm. You need them to progress in the game and they will also make you rich. Do use grass starters and place fences on them to ensure that the grass spreads and that your animals cannot eat the source. Do cut down grass with your site after you have a silo and most importantly, do place grass starters all over your farm on the very last day of each season. Grass rapidly expands on the start of the new season. This is exponentially better if there is lots of spread out grass for it to spread from. And most importantly, remember that this does work in winter as well. Don't ignore crop enhancers, fertilizer, speed grow, retaining soil and tree fertilizer. These are all fundamental to your success. Being ignorant and not using these will seriously set you back. They will allow you to harvest higher quality crops. Crops will grow faster and crops will not even need to be watered. Refusing to use these is at your own detriment. Do abuse the mechanics of the game so that your crop enhancers will never disappear. During the change of a season, if a crop is planted on a crop enhancer, the enhancers will not disappear when the season changes. Fiber is one of the best uses for this as fiber seeds can grow in any season. Crop enhancers are expensive and take a lot of effort to craft, so make sure they do not disappear. Don't pick the forester profession. Yeah, this thing is actually good. It will allow you to get more wood and it will allow you to get hardwood from normal trees. That is not bad at all. But it isn't as good as some of the other options. Even though this profession is great, it's worthless in comparison. Do pick the gatherer and botanist profession. This is just too good to pass. You will have a small chance to pick up two forageables at a time, which is nice, but wait, it gets exponentially better. You will also be guaranteed to only pick up iridium quality forageables. This will save you a ton of inventory space but most importantly this works on truffles as well. Imagine a world where you will only harvest the highest quality truffles in the world. Well you can live in that world right now. Don't ever just randomly upgrade your watering can. As you might know, whenever you upgrade a tool, Clint will take it from you. You will be unable to water anything for an entire day. And if the next day is a festival, you won't be able to water anything for two entire days. This can severely set you back and you could even miss a very close window to harvest some crops. Do check the TV first and see if it might rain tomorrow. If tomorrow is a rainy day, then water your crops and go upgrade your watering can. This will ensure that your crops are watered without having you to manually water them. This is a very basic tip but absolutely essential to your success. 
Don't be a baby and leave the mines at midnight so that you can get back into your bed on time. Yeah, I am talking to you. I know there is a little penalty for passing out from exhaustion, but that penalty is a 1000 gold fine and yeah, you will wake up with less energy, but that is it. You won't lose any items. Do mine right up until you pass out. Those extra two hours will allow you to get considerably deeper in the skull cavern and get much, much more iridium ore. Naturally, if you have warp totems or a return scepter, you should use those. Otherwise, just mine until you pass out. Don't settle for an ugly, highly productive farm. Yeah, I know your farm is highly optimized for maximum profits and efficiency, but to be honest, it's ugly. You don't need to settle for an ugly farm. Do spend some time decorating your farm. You can have the best of both worlds. After decorating your farm and proving that it is highly efficient, take a screenshot and show the farm off on Reddit. I mean, that is the entire reason we are doing this right for internet points. Don't hoard everything, let me guess, you watched a video this one time where someone told you to keep one of everything just in case. Once you have completed the community center, you will most likely never use most of these things. You are just collecting junk and filling up chests. Sure, do this if you'd still like, but instead, do sell everything except for resources. You can basically sell anything and everything, and I promise you if you have been hoarding things for a long time and when you sell them all, you will be absolutely loaded with money and happiness. I used to hoard items. now. I just hold money instead. Don't ignore fishing. Yes, fishing can seem really hard at first and it might not seem worth it except for completing the community center. But if you fish correctly, it can be one of the most profitable things in the early game. You can make 5,000 gold a day with fishing and it will take crops a while to catch up in the early game. Do abuse and utilize all of the mechanics to make fishing almost effortless. Max out your fishing level, use seafoam pudding and use the best fishing tackle out there. Either use the cork or trap fishing tackle and you will be catching fish with literal pure ease. You'll be making bank in no time, especially if you use the fishing tackle that reduces the time to bite. Don't even bother bringing your pickaxe with you to the skull cavern, don't you dare do it. Gold ore and iridium ore just takes way too long to mine, it isn't worth it. Time is our biggest enemy in the skull cavern and the lousy pickaxe isn't helping. Do use either a slingshot or bombs, these will one shot any rock or ore that dares stare you in the face. Not only do these destroy rocks in one hit, but they do so in a large radius, allowing you to rapidly mine resources and find ladders and even shafts quicker. These will turn your boring floor 50 skull cavern runs into floor 300 mega profitable runs. If you suck at the slingshot, start practicing, it is worth it. Don't you dare click on the join button and give me $5 a month, it's most likely not worth it. Do hit subscribe instead, it's free so why not? Don't buy sheep, there are so many animals in this game and the sheep is by far the worst. It isn't even worth looking at or considering. Rather fill up your barn with pigs or ostriches. These animals are highly profitable and we really don't need that much wool in this game anyway. Do buy rabbits instead. While we don't need that much wood, we will need it here and there for oil makers, clothing and whatnot. This is where rabbits come in. As you know, rabbits will chop off their feet and give them to you, allowing you to befriend people easier. But they can also shed their fur and yes that counts as wool. You'll get enough wool from rabbits. Sheep produce more wool than you need. Rabbits are good enough. That was 13 do's and don'ts in Stardew Valley. This next video has 12 absolutely forbidden tips that you should not share with anyone. Go check it out. Thanks for watching but for now I will see you in the next video.